how to make a career switch into cybersecurity. So for those of you on my channel who are just getting into cybersecurity from a different role, whether it's in tech or outside of tech, this video is hopefully going to be helpful for you. And I do want to start off with a little bit of a background of my experience going into cybersecurity and how I got started to help you give you some insight into how I was able to start working in cybersecurity with most of my background being in software engineering. So I actually graduated with a bachelor's degree in information science and technology or IST slash IT in other schools. And at the time, all of my experience was in data analytics and, and software engineering. So I didn't have any cybersecurity related experience, but my school did have some cybersecurity courses and it basically gave you a certification if you took some combination of classes, security classes specifically. So I took digital forensics and I took network security and, and that was all I had in terms of cybersecurity knowledge, but I never have had any cybersecurity experience prior to this, prior to my first job out of college. So when I was looking for full-time roles, I actually came across this specific role that I ended up going into, which was my cybersecurity rotation program in my first job. And in getting that role, the key thing that I want to emphasize is the fact that I put a huge spotlight on my previous experiences and how that can help me in a job in cybersecurity. So for example, I came from a software development background and my previous internship, which was as a software engineer at JP Morgan Chase. In that role, while I was building a full stack application, there are parts of the application that actually dealt with confidentiality and basically just dealing with access and authorization into, into who can view slash download what data on the application that we were building. So, so while I wasn't necessarily working on cybersecurity related work, it was still relevant because I was able to talk about it from a cybersecurity perspective and I was able to show my employer slash interviewer that I was able to think with cybersecurity in mind even as a software engineer and if you're someone who is completely new into cybersecurity you can check out my course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity it has everything you need from resumes cover letters to cybersecurity interview prep as well as the actual job application process that I personally use to get my first job as well as my second job in cybersecurity and if you're interested in checking it out my course is linked in the description below so the first thing I want you guys to work on slash practice is to take a look at your resume and take a look at all of your previous experiences and see how you can think of that or frame that from a cybersecurity perspective during your next interview or your next call with a recruiter. This is definitely a lot easier if you're working in tech, specifically if you're coming from a data analytics or data engineering side. The main thing you might discuss is making sure that only the people who need to see the data can see the data, dealing with least privilege, maybe even partial access to certain parts of the data rather than the entire thing. So lots of different things that you can go into on that front that you've worked on in the past that, that isn't necessarily cybersecurity, but it is still related to security because really cybersecurity just touches so many different things in tech if you're on the world wide web that it's kind of hard to be in a role and not even consider thinking about security and if you're a software engineer then you can pretty easily talk about the different application security things whether you're doing qa testing um, regression testing any kind of testing to be honest you can also talk about application scanners or maybe vulnerability reports or pen tests or pen test findings that you've dealt with in the past where maybe there's an external or internal team that assess your application and you had to take those findings and create tickets out of them and then fix them, remediate them and go through that validation process. So there's a lot of things that you can go back to if you're someone who's switching from a different career going into cybersecurity. But let's say you're non-technical and you have no experience on that front. I would really just start with getting some hands on experience and you can do this on various different free platforms online. So Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, um, they do have paid versions, but you can just use the freemium version or like the free version or that they give you that they give you a certain amount of time on. You don't have to pay a membership to use these platforms basically. There are lots of different pen testing sites and even if you want to go into Red Team, I think because there's just so much free Red Team slash pen testing resources available online, it's a lot easier to start there and then think about and then move on to blue teaming skills, which are less likely to be open source or free compared to compared to the red teaming tools but it still helps teach you a lot about the blue team being on the red team side and red team and blue team just means the offensive and the defensive security team so the offensive security team or aka the red team those skills that you learn will be really helpful in any role that you go into in cyber security when you're able to understand how to find a vulnerability how to exploit it and basically just what an attacker is thinking and when you complete a challenge let's say on try hack me or hack the box they basically have hacking challenges that you can do as a beginner and if you're a complete beginner and you can also find walkthroughs online to actually see what other people are doing so that you can get some examples of what you can try especially if you're a complete beginner don't be afraid to start out with walkthroughs and then after you complete a challenge you can put that on your resume and have and kind of start building up your security experience on your own through your little side projects and if you guys aren't familiar josh Matacor actually has a video on cyber security projects that you can work on so I would definitely check that out if you're looking to fill your resume with a few more projects especially if you don't have any cybersecurity 
background. This will be really helpful to kind of show employers that you are learning. And especially if you've taken some courses online or an online certification program, put all that in your resume. And this is kind of where you get into that bulking your resume section. So this will definitely be easier if you already have some kind of if you already have some kind of technical experience in a tech role, then I would try to frame your bullet points for your job descriptions to at least one that has something more cybersecurity related so that a recruiter can justify to a hiring manager that, hey, this person doesn't come from a cybersecurity background, but they've taken XYZ course. They learned XYZ skills, maybe Nmap, Wireshark, Burp Suite, and they worked on two Capture the Flags, South Street challenges. Capture the Flags are basically hacking challenges, but tournament style. So you have a time limit and you basically are competing with other players on a scoreboard but you're basically just working on your own or on a team to solve hacking challenges and there are typically going to be prizes at the end but even if you don't get to the end it's a great thing to put on your resume that you've worked on the capture the flag by yourself or on a team because it just shows that you're continuously learning and looking for ways to improve on your skill set even as a beginner maybe you can even join ab side which are typically cybersecurity communities that are in most of the major cities in the u.s and across the globe so they usually have online events as well as in-person events and it's a great way to get involved with the cybersecurity community and of course it's a great way to network and just meet people in cybersecurity learn about what they do maybe get to know the different jobs out there that are available to you and who knows maybe even make genuine connections and get job referrals for a specific role in cybersecurity that you want to go into so at this point you should be able to fill your resume up with skills that you're able to use on the job and that you're able to talk about during an interview or with an employer i would also go and start by looking for a few different jobs in cybersecurity specifically job titles let's say a security analyst and just looking up different jobs with that title maybe at companies that you want to apply for and looking at the list of skills slash prerequisites that they want their candidates to have have for example if they want you to have experience using burp suite then you probably want to dig a little bit more into burp suite use it on some side projects learn what it does its pros and cons maybe some competitors and what it's used for and what it's not used for so there's a lot of different things you can do to kind of cater your resume to to be the best candidate for a specific job title or a specific company even that you want to go into and i think that's one of the best places to start especially if you already have that experience behind you but you're really just looking for that extra buff of cybersecurity experience or cybersecurity skills slash tools that you want to add to your resume and if you're going into a more technical role like a security engineering role or a network engineering role or a systems engineering role then it may be helpful to you to learn some scripting skills whether it's in javascript bash scripting um, maybe even python which is probably one of the easiest languages to learn as a beginner scripting is really lightweight and it's also very easy to learn especially as a beginner there's probably going to be dozens of courses on youtube for free that you can use to learn how to script a pretty basic bash script or a pretty basic javascript or python script so by now you probably have a few good cybersecurity projects under your belt. You have your resume worked out. You know the skills that your employer is looking for for a specific role. And now it's really just about throwing out the numbers. Um, personally, I think applications, job applications in general are a numbers game. Um, it's like the law of large numbers. The more you throw out there, the more likely you'll get to hear back from different interviewers, from different companies. Not every company might be looking for a person who doesn't come from a cybersecurity background, but a lot of times in cybersecurity, because we're looking for such niche roles, as well as the fact that there aren't enough cybersecurity professionals out there, companies are really looking for diverse cybersecurity professionals that come from diverse backgrounds. My previous red team mentor actually came from a psychology background and then actually took a course on pen testing and ended up really enjoying it. And now she is a full-time red teamer so i really think that you don't have to come from a cybersecurity background to thrive in this field it really does take diversity of thought and and in cybersecurity because you want to think like a threat actor think like the attackers that are attacking an organization trying to steal data trying to exploit a vulnerability you want to think like an attacker and the more diversity of thought the better honestly so definitely don't undersell yourself when you're in the job search process i would cast a really wide net when i'm applying to jobs i usually apply to hundreds at a time and it really does help you get used to rejection and if it doesn't work out with one company then there's always going to be another company or another cybersecurity role that's going to open up that may be potentially for you and in between that time, I would just continuously study for cybersecurity interviews, maybe get a cybersecurity bootcamp. And if you have the time, maybe join a cybersecurity bootcamp. But another alternative to that is to just study for a cybersecurity entry-level certification. I recently made a video on the best cybersecurity certifications out there for entry-level slash beginners. So I can link that video down below if you guys want to check that out. I'm posting one video a day for the month of December. So if you see this video in December, that is probably what's happening. Thank you guys for all of your continuous support. And sorry in advance if you get tired of hearing my voice in the next month. But I'm definitely excited to kind of go through this challenge 
even during this busy time of year. So yeah, hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions or any other tips and tricks that you might want to add in the comments below for the community, especially for those of you who have pivoted from another career with a few years of experience and then eventually got into cybersecurity yourself. We would love to hear your story and any tips that you might want to share that you might want to share with the rest of the community. I also have a Discord channel if you guys want to check that out. It is linked in the description below where you can also meet more people in cybersecurity, especially those of you who are just getting started. But that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. Also, don't forget to check out my course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity. And if this video was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. Except for this month where I'm posting once a day. But hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.